Okay. Do we get to talk to Larry? What's going on? Wow, it's been a while since I've had this much fun and excitement. A face-off against Mr. Edgeworth. A harrowing tightrope walk for the defense. Phew, I'm exhausted already. Boss! Oh, hey, Athena. I'm here for more support. Athena, you're all done practicing for Trudy's Magic Show. It's nice to know that you actually get to exist here. Well, to be perfectly honest, uh, I sort of ran away. But that's because she was putting my life in danger, I tell you. I see. I think I'll need to have a one-on-one -on -one with her. You're really athletic and fit, Athena, so Trudy probably thinks she can run you ragged. Okay. That may be true, which is why not even Trudy can keep up with me when I run at full speed. <laughs> Looks like you spoke too soon, Athena. Never underestimate the resourcefulness of a great magician! Huh? No! The terror! Magical girl Juicy Wright is on the scene! <laughs> now it's Athena, it's time to practice human combustion magic! How are you at burning? Do you burn well? How dry are you? Go on, douse yourself in this gasoline! We don't need to worry about that, let's just get it together! Don't worry, it's a magic chick after all, so it's perfectly safe. Just just rub this gasoline all in your hair. <laughs> Run away! Hey you! You won't get off that easily! <laughs> they get along so well, don't they? Do they? Me of good old the good old days. You, me, and Pearly. Oh, it's such a gumshoe. Can't forget him, wherever he's been. We had all kinds of fun at the crime scenes back then, remember? Leaving me to do all the serious investigating, as I recall. Court will soon be back in session, Mr. Wright. Right, thank you. Uh... So there's the next witness, right? I can't wait to see what happens. Sadly, I can already imagine it. Ugh. Okay, back in session. Court will now reconvene. Uh, Nick, Edgy! The two of you are gonna hang me out to dry, aren't you? No, not the both of us. Just Mr. Wright. <laughs> Nick, how could you? I don't really think he did it, of course, but I gotta use whatever leads I can. Mr. Butts, there's a possibility you moved the lantern that had the dead body in it. So if you want to clear yourself of any suspicion, all you have to do is testify. Now then, your testimony, please, witness. Uh. Nick, you big fat stinking jerk! Press. Objection. How could you doubt your best bud? We've known each other since elementary school. And that's how I could doubt you. I know, Larry. Well, well get this, pal. Our friendship's over, okay? That's not a testimony, you're just mad! Hmm. Uh, That's, uh, that Maya side eye. Hmm. Well, go ahead, Mr. Wright. He's all yours. <laughs> Why me? You're the one who called him to the stand, so it's your responsibility. Thanks, old chum. Kikichi, show me a little respect, even just the shred! You may cross the time on the witness, Mr. Wright. I would, if there were any testimony to cross-examine. We just press it, we'll just press it, and he'll talk about it accidentally because he's crazy. It's gonna be fine! Cross-examination! Nick is a jerk face. 
Nick, you big fat stinking jerk! Excuse me? I do not smell. You smell. Come on, Larry, can't you please give me something real to work with? Don't think I don't know about your tricks! If I say something careless, you're gonna shove some evidence at me with a loud... OBJECTION! And a super smug look on your face! Yeah, well, that is my job. My job is having a smug face and pointing. That's what I do. I'm very good at it. And if I get found guilty, how are you gonna take responsibility for what you've done? Why should I take responsibility for just doing my job? You heartless jerk. Don't you have any compassion for me? How can you doubt your best bud? We've known each other since elementary school. I'm sorry, Mr. Butts, but if it wasn't Miss Wyatt that earned the hole with that card, then you're the most likely suspect. Nick! Are you seriously doubting the innocence of your old childhood friend who you defended numerous times and found completely innocent? Well, technically, yes. But it isn't personal, I assure you. Oh, a true friend would believe in me no matter what. Can't you see my tears? Don't they mean anything to you? Nick! Nick! You don't really think you can cry your way out of this, do you? Okay, fine! In that case... Well, get this, pal! Our friendship's over! It's over! Holy I hate you now! Larry, listen to me. Shut up! I'm not talking to you anymore! I'm gonna go over here! This is getting us nowhere! Come off it, Larry! Huh? If you don't quit fooling around and start testifying, Miss Wyatt will be found guilty! The woman you supposedly love? The woman who you wanted to marry? For real? If no new information comes out of this cross examination, then yes, Mr. Butts, for real. Not that I would have a problem with that myself. Uh. Larry, just tell us the truth already. Did you or didn't you go into the hold and move a lantern up to the reception hall? I, uh... I never moved any bull lantern, I tell ya! Bull lantern? What? Did I say something weird? Did I got something on my face? Do I got... Do I got horns? Am I a cow, cow man? Am I a minotaur? You told me that you didn't attend the wedding reception. Can you believe they told me only family and relatives could attend? They wouldn't even let me into the reception hall. Did you sneak in in a different lantern? Uh, y yeah, so what? Then that's odd. No one in this courtroom ever mentioned the sex of the lantern that was moved. So how could you know that it was a bull lantern? Uh, you didn't have to actually go to the reception hall to know that! Anyone could tell there was two Pegabulls by looking at the Flying Chapel's pamphlet. OBJECTION! All I can tell right now is that there's a strong scent of bull in the air here. Oh, and the things that come out of them. Please add that last statement to your testimony, Mr. Butts. Anyone could tell there were two Pegabulls by looking at the Flying Chapel's pamphlet. We're gonna press it before slamming a pamphlet in his face. Seriously, Larry? If you're hiding something, you'd better fess up right now. I'm telling you, I don't know nothing. Why do you have to tell me so much? Why? Because you're you, that's why. Oh, Phoenix, ouch. Hey, G, you think Nick's being awful to me, don't you? So you tell him, tell Nick what a big meanie he is. I would if I thought he was being one. Not you too! Why does anybody ever take my side? I wish I didn't have to doubt him. But something about what he just said doesn't add up. You finally got a decent statement out of him, huh, Nick? 
Yeah, finally. Sure took a lot of work, though. I hope all of this leads somewhere. Okay. We're going to this statement, and we are presenting like they're feeding us this one pretty hard. The pamphlet. I want you to take a look at this, Mr. Butts. Because unfortunately for you, the pamphlet clearly shows a peg of cow and a peg of bull in their example diagram of the reception hall. Huh? But on that day, instead of putting a peg of cow and peg of bull out for the bride and groom, there were two male peg of bulls on display. Hey! Yet somehow, you knew there were two peg of bulls in the reception hall that day. There's only one way you'd know something like that, Larry. It was you who moved the peg bowl to the reception hall, wasn't it? <laughs> no. Larry, you, you didn't. Mr. Butts, did you move the lantern containing the victim's body to the reception hall? Th that's what it looks like. What? Larry... Did he not- was there a dead body and he didn't notice it? Oh, oh, wait, Nick! You don't think I'm the murderer, do you? Maybe you and Mr. Gloomsbury were fighting over Miss Wyatt and you ended up killing him? Maya, not you too! Look, I did sneak into the reception, but that's as far as it went! No, I didn't kill anybody! You know me, I wouldn't hurt a fly! You snuck into the reception? Yeah, sure, but some of the sprocket men caught and locked me up in one of the cabins. It was pretty awful, actually. But that's when I made that drawing of the pterodactyl I showed you, Nick. Ixnay on the Earl Duck, don't pay, Larry. Mr. Wright, not even you would take this fast that far, would you? Would you? Ah, we are talking about Larry. What do I do? Do I accuse Larry of being the true culprit? Yes, because he'll have to testify and back out of it. I accuse! I guess I have no choice but to accuse him. Wait a minute. But Larry didn't have any reason to kill Gloomsbury. No, you're right, Mr. Edgeworth. But Mr. Butts didn't have a reason to kill Mr. Gloomsbury. But thou must not. Okay. He might have had an imaginary reason to kill Soren Sprocket. Sure, but not Mr. Gloomsbury. After all, he did steal Mr. Sprocket's bride and try to elope with her. Just because I tried to steal somebody's bride does it not, does not make me a murderer. I believe you, Larry, and I don't think you killed anybody either. You would never do anything like that. Nick, oh buddy, oh pal. I knew you'd come through for me. Funny that considering your sworn testimony just now that we were through... Mr. Butts, it's time you told this court the whole truth. Understood? Alright, moving the lantern. It's just like Nick said, I'm the one who moved the lantern. Why? I was poking around the reception hall before the main event and saw a lantern was broken. There was no one that said exchange with the one in the hold, Ellen. So I decided to do Ellie a favor. So you switched the lanterns before the reception, did you? And that means the victim really was killed before the reception. Hmm, hmm. Okay. Interesting. It would appear that Mr. Butts completely fell for the defendant's scheme. Scheme? What scheme? This note from the defendant, exchange with the one in the hold, Ellen. Mr. Butts moved the lantern with the body in it up to the reception hall because of this note. And thus he has become a suspect in Mr. Gloomsbury's murder. Nope, oh, that second lantern did feel pretty heavy. But 
I never would have thought there was a dead body in it. I thought it was just poorly made, out of metals. Uh, I wasn't like that doing on a lantern in the first place. You could go wrong with Edgeworth. I left that note for myself. I was simply a reminder because I can be very forgetful. Objection! What a sorry excuse, Miss Wyatt. The prosecution contends that this note shows one facet of the defendant's murderous plan. And you, Mr. Butts. <clears throat> you played right into Miss Wyatt's hands. No way, Edgy! I don't believe it! Objection! Do you still really believe Miss Wyatt to be the culprit, Mr. Edgeworth? Hmm, of course. My stance on the matter remains unchanged. If you think I'm wrong, then prove it with your cross-examination. Gladly. Very well, Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. Hey, at least he's less hostile this time. I'll take it. Move in the lantern. Just like Nick said, I'm the I'm the one who moved the lantern. Hold it. Okay. Why didn't you tell us that sooner, Larry? Because I knew you guys were gonna be suspicious of me, that's why! We're suspicious of you now because you tried to hide it! My thoughts exactly. Hmm. <laughs> well, now I've told you. Happy? Yeah? So you're not suspicious of me, so it's good. So how about let me go? How about I just leave and I'll go do something else? No, not yet. We need you to stick around to sort a few things out. Ugh, fine! I was poking around the reception hall before the main event and saw a lantern was broken. Hold it! The lantern you swapped out was a female pegamoo. A peg of cow, right? Yeah, I guess. Why did you replace a female lantern with a male one? Because I was too busy trying not to get caught. I didn't have time to check for little details like, you know, genitalia. If you didn't want to get caught, you could have just left well enough alone, you know. Whatever! Anyway, when I took a look at the broken lantern, I saw... There was a note on it that said, exchange with the one in the hole, Ellen. So I decided to do Ellie a favor. Oops. I meant to press those things. Really, Larry, you definitely did something stupid somewhere along the way. Well, Larry sure is one special guy. Well, Larry sure is one special guy. Not everyone is the approach of being this distracted by their best friends. Assuming he can't be trusted from the get-go, usually makes things easier, I've learned. Oh, I see. He totally trusts him to be totally untrustworthy. Yeah, I guess that just about sums it up. Okay. Let's press those things I missed. Hold it. Press. That note wasn't addressed to you, was it? Well, I guess not, but... How could I let my dear sweet Ellie do all that hard physical labor on her own? It's precisely that thought process that constantly gets you in trouble, Larry. Besides, it was for my big chance to show how much I cared about her. So I decided to do Ellie a favor. Hold it! Nobody saw you the whole time while you were switching the lanterns? No, nope. I didn't get caught. Not that time, anyway. Not that time? Yeah, when I tried to sneak into the reception all the first time. I didn't have as much luck. Those sprocket guys spotted me and nabbed me. It's kind of hard to miss a jacket that loud. All of my words are failing me right now. I have no words. Pretty exciting, don't you think? Yeah? Larry, you need help. And then they locked me up in one of the cabins. Uh, uh, Nick, what are you asking about stuff like this for anyway? Shouldn't you be trying to prove Ellie's innocence? I am, Larry. Well, is that statement of his important to the case? Yes. Put it on. Mr. Butt's trying to crash the reception and seemingly getting locked up in a cabin. I believe these might be important facts in the case, Your Honor. Very well, Mr. Butts. Please add that statement to your testimony. 
I tried to sneak into the reception hall, but I got caught and locked up in a cabin. Hold it. So you got locked up. Then what happened? I broke out. Then I started looking for Ellie and wandered in the reception hall again. That's when I saw the broken lantern and replaced it. Even after they caught you and locked you up, you still went looking for Miss Wyatt. But hold on a minute. What is it, Nick? Maya, doesn't something seem weird to you? Larry is saying he replaced the lantern after he broke out of the cabin. That's right. Oh, wait. Huh. You're right. It doesn't make much sense, does it? Mr. Wright, have you found an inconsistency in the witness's statement? Yeah, I believe so, Your Honor. Mr. Butts moved the lantern after he broke out of the cabin, but that contradicts with this. Um... The reception had two bulls, but how do we prove that? Oh, the timing of the entry! He moved the lantern after he broke out of the cabin, or does that matter? Oh, he said he wheeled it there before the reception began? He said he moved it there before the reception began, but he'd crashed the reception and they'd locked him in. Take that! Is that... Yes, it's the broken lantern, Your Honor. Mr. Butts, what you're saying doesn't make any sense at all. What? Why not? You swapped the lantern before the reception began, right? Yeah, that's what I said, isn't it? But you also just said that you swapped the lanterns after you got locked up in a cabin for trying to sneak into the reception. In other words, you're saying you swapped the lanterns both before the reception and after the reception took place. Hmm, that certainly doesn't make any sense, does it? Unless there were two receptions. Mr. Butts, did you swap the lantern before or after the reception? Um... Which was it, before or after? There's a world of difference between the two. Well, Mr. Butts? I guess I can't expect guys like you to understand. In a nutshell, it was both before and after the reception. It was Schrodinger's switcheroo. What? I tried to sneak into the first reception and got locked up. The first reception? Uh oh, I don't like where this is going. Then, through the power of Ellie's pendant, time got rewound and we went back to the time before the reception. It was after that when I replaced the lantern. So it was both before the reception and after the reception. Get it? Because, you know, I failed the first time, but then the other me got the job done. We went back in time to before the reception. So of course the reception would take place one more time after that, right? That's what I what I said makes perfect sense to everyone, and everyone agrees with me and thinks I'm cool. Mr. Wright, what in the world is the witness talking about? Has he developed some sort of intellectual ailment I'm not aware of since I saw him last? Has he gained even more stupidity somehow? Um... Well, none of the sprockets seem to remember the time skip, but I do. And Ellie remembers it too. I think the power of our love for each other made that miracle happen. Mr. Wright, I'm sorry, but could you please translate this man's gibberish so the rest of us can understand? So I had to be the one to explain him on the whole time. Okay. Go on, Nick. I know you can do it. Looks like you don't have much choice, Nick. To heck with it. I can't lose any more of my dignity today anyway. I'm already at the bottom. Time to defend time traveling. The defendant, Miss Ellen Wyatt, has told the defense the following strange story. She said that after the reception ended, she was attacked by Mr. Gloomsbury. She claims that as she was being assaulted, she made a wish upon her pendant. Please, take me back, back to that blissful moment. In doing so...
time apparently rewound itself to just before the reception began. It what? I know it's hard to believe, but think about it this way. Through the power of the pendant, both Ellen Wyatt and Larry Butts experienced time travel. <laughs> what? Polkanka! I don't know that word, sorry. Objection! What absolute rubbish. Mr. Wright, I've heard my fair share of your nonsense over the years. But this takes the cake. Have you thoroughly lost your mind? Objection! But this is simply the conclusion I came to. Using that logic ability you love so much. What? The truth of the matter is, the future president of Sprocket Aviation, Soren Sprocket, has been researching time machines. So, what if a time machine has already been successfully created, or has been created in the future, and then came back? And what if that's one of Sprocket Aviation's top secret inventions? Uh, a time machine? Could I go back to a time when I had hair? Just kidding, that time doesn't exist. Ha <laughs> ha Yeah, I even saw some of them while we were time traveling. I saw a pterodactyl flying through the sky. Maybe the airship was set to travel through time for their honeymoon trip, huh? What? A, a pterodactyl? The dinosaur? Objection. You can't possibly have any evidence to back up your ridiculous time travel story. Well, I, uh... No, he saw a pterodactyl. And it's, um, as I thought. In any case, I now have the evidence to prove that you're no more intelligent than Larry. Hold it! Not so fast now, Edgy. I'm not the same old Larry you used to know. Oh. You want evidence? I got your evidence right here. This is a photo I secretly took of the first reception. What? What? New secret evidence that Larry's had in his pocket. Larry, I can't believe you. Well, anyway, good job. I can't believe you, but good job. If we compare the photos of the first and second receptions and can find a difference, then we'll be able to prove that the reception was held twice, which doesn't prove time travel, but does prove at least two receptions. But do you really think such a difference exists? Yes, Your Honor. I just need some time to find it for you. But can we just pull both of the photos up and... This... This is preposterous. Very well. Please show the court what's different then. This is proof positive that the wedding reception was held twice. Um... Let's look at the picture. What is different? Court record. Let's look at the other photo so that we can compare them. All right. The flowers are different colors. She has yellow flowers in this picture and they're red in this picture. I'm glad I looked at that photo because I wouldn't have remembered that offhand. Please direct your attention to Miss Wyatt's bou bouquet of flowers. In the photo of one of her in-laws took, the defendant is holding a yellow bouquet. But in the photo Mr. Butts took, she's holding a red bouquet. You're right! That's impossible. What, what does this mean? It means the defendant really did experience two wedding receptions. And she did that when she traveled back through time. Doesn't prove that, but what? Edgeworth's looking pretty mad over there. Nick, you did it. You proved Ellen's time travel story to be true. Kind of. Yeah, I can hardly believe it myself. It's just as Ellen said, the reception was held twice. 
This turns every assumption we base this trial on upside down. Objection. I refuse to accept such a ludicrous argument. It is pure fiction under the guise of pseudoscience at best. There is simply no such thing as time travel. I know it's hard, but can you suspend your disbelief for one nanosecond, Edgeworth? I bet sci-fi movies push all your buttons the wrong way, don't they, Mr. Edgeworth? Do you hate Star Wars? Are you the kind of person who hates Star Wars? They're fun movies, Miles. I can totally picture you yelling, that would never happen, every five seconds in the screen. You can't have a laser that just stops, it would keep going. You can't make a sword out of them. Honestly, maybe you should stay away from movie dates altogether. That's why you can't get any dates. That's why nobody likes you. That's neither here nor there. This is real life we're talking about. But the proof is clearly shown in the two photographs. That's right, Mr. Edgeworth. No matter how okay. inexplicable... Fine, I'll entertain your absurd delusion. If only to demolish it before your very eyes. If Star Wars doesn't have time travel, how do you explain the special editions? Huh? What? Let's start with this then, shall we? There is one thing your time travel theory fails to explain. I've, I've noticed you. Notice me, Will Pye. Thanks for, thanks for following. And that is the memories of the other guests there. The defendant and Larry remember the reception occurring twice. But no member of the Sprocket family has even mentioned such a thing. That's because the time machine is classified technolo- I'm not done, you bird brain. But bird brain as I was saying, if the entire family had been sworn to secrecy, then why hadn't they sworn the woman who was marrying into the family to secrecy too? Th that's a good point! Honestly, all it takes is a little common sense, Mr. Wright. Hmm, even still, how do we know that that trip through the time, that the, tri the trip through time did not really occur? There is proof in the photo that it did, and besides, the time travel doesn't exist. Well, I'd be a little disappointed, frankly. I was hoping to go back to the days of my youth and watch them from afar as I... You mustn't allow yourself to be taken in by Mr. Wright's whimsical tales, Your Honor. I've read about it in various literature, you see. And they all say that time travel is just not logically feasible. Ugh. Hmm. Maybe our argument was just a little too nonsensical, Nick. Well, in that case... Why don't we put common sense to the test? Excuse me? Because you see, I have uncommon sense. It's even better. The wedding reception was held twice. The photos are proof of that. But it wasn't because of time travel. It's simply because the reception had actually been held twice. Isn't that the most reasonable way to interpret the situation? Hmm. Would you care to elaborate, Mr. Wright? If time travel doesn't exist, then there's only one way to make sense of what happened. Somebody must have orchestrated this strange phenomenon, and that somebody is... the gods themselves. It would have to be everyone at the reception. There would literally have to have be a huge conspiracy going on, right? What if all the guests of the reception conspired together to hold the reception twice and keep quiet about it? What? And for what purpose would they conspire to do such a thing? Maybe they thought it was a rehearsal? Well, uh... <laughs> A brilliant deduction defense. I'm guessing. Yes. <laughs> I can tell that you are not a renowned lawyer for nothing. <laughs> I must say, I underestimated you. <laughs> How so, Mr. Nickety? 
You just walking in the court? You've managed to name each event precisely as they happened. <laughs> you have revealed it all to the light of day. Yeah. Th then, that means it was us. We orchestrated the whole thing. <laughs> yes, the reception was held twice. But not because of time travel, no. We simply held it the second time. Yeah. What? Why? Why would you do such a thing? To make it as though the murder Miss Ellen committed never happened. <laughs> Master Sawan figured that if Miss Ellen, who killed Bloomsbury after the first reception, experienced the reception one more time, she would think it was all a dream. It was he who ordered us to make it happen. However, only a few, myself included, knew of Miss Ellen's crime. Hmm. Are you saying most of the guests attended two receptions without knowing why? Indeed, they needed no reason. Master Sorin told them to do it, and do it they did. <laughs> that is the sprocket way. Then who hid the body in the lantern? We did. Hmm. But we did not anticipate the petals finding their way and nor the actions of Mr. Butts. <laughs> and that's how you intended to cover the whole situation up. There's just one thing everyone here has wrong. The real scene of the murder was not the hole, but was the Vista deck. What? Th then Miss Wyatt's recollection of the events must be correct? I admit we tried to cover this incident up. But the fact that Miss Ellen killed Bloomsbury is undeniable. This is quite a turn of events. Uh huh. <laughs> and so it appears we have arrived at the truth at last. No, no. Please do feel free to travel back in time, Mr. Wright, and attempt to do this trial over again. Go on. Let's not get hasty, Edgeworth, but I am going to pick up this symbol and this thing and just say, please, please, back to that blissful moment, back before he got to be so smug. I bet you can't do it. I bet I can't either. <laughs> Your Honor, we will have to hold a separate trial for the cover-up conspiracy later. But as far as this case goes, I believe we are ready for your ruling. Hmm. Objection! Just before the defendant lost consciousness, during her attack, she says she saw someone strike the victim. It's possible that this third party is the true culprit. Objection. You still want us to believe the defendant's words. Perhaps you've lost more than your touch during your time abroad. This third person nonsense is nothing but rubbish, and you know it. Objection! By the same token, how can we trust those who conspired and lied to fool this court of law? For all we know, they might still be hiding something. Uh, you never know when to quit, do you? Now, now, calm down, both of you. You can make out later after the trial is over. <laughs> In any case, there isn't enough trustworthy information yet for me to render a verdict. I suggest we continue the trial after both sides have investigated the matter further. Mm, uh, very well, Your Honor. Phew, that was close. Mr. Nickety. As for you and your cohorts attempt to cover up this crime, your case will be brought to a separate trial following the resolution of this current one. Understood, your honor. <laughs> well then, this concludes today's trial. Court is adjourned. To be continued. I was expecting that to go uh, to a little deeper at this point, but I guess that's the end of the first set of trials. We're going to have a lot of investigating to do to figure out 
what kind of time travel shenanigans aren't going on. But until next time. Subscribe, etc., etc., etc. Bye for now.